Hey, no on stream. By the way, guys, we're here with uh, Byron Gaines. You guys don't know, former federal. Hold on one sec. I don't know why. Is it echoing a little bit or what? Hold on. Hold on. Fix this. Yeah, I'm over here looking at flight paths and shit, man. Like, I'm over here trying to. I'll figure this out. Trying to get into it. Give me one sec. I, you go ahead and talk to your people. I'm, I'm going to figure this out real quick. Okay. Yeah, so. So, so chat, I'm, I'm looking at these, you know, and, and by the way, you know, for the people, you know, this is why I think TMZ was a little bit misleading. Uh, it would, it would, like, I'm, I'm almost certain, you know, uh, because I've been on a private jet where people tried to finesse. All right, you're not hear me, but I can't hear you. All right, let me, let me figure this out. Yeah, just, just go to the settings and see if you can change the voice stuff. Now, so. Okay, that's, I think I got you now, bro. Sorry, I had to me? switch headphones. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. I got you now. My bad. Okay, yeah, so, um. We're over here just kind of figuring out how probably all of this happened because we're getting a lot of information now, right? Yeah. Um, we're getting a body cam that we're about to look at. We're getting videos from inside the the actual property and how the feds kind of like really went through all safes are open, which I'm wondering if they got the codes for them or they just like, fuck it, just broke them all open. But before we even get to that, we're looking at the flight paths because, because what was known and everyone, you know, I hate that TMZ even did that because they're way too smart. And I think they did that for a narrative. They yeah. they were almost acting like, oh, Diddy is trying to leave the country, which makes for a great headline. Like, you know what I mean? Like, brings you back OJ, right? But yeah. in reality, no, the feds knew exactly what, like, the feds aren't dumb. And, and you could speak to this. Don't, don't you think they get a search warrant and they know exactly where this guy is? And they probably, because I was listening to Uncle Luke, he said, the feds usually come at nighttime. And I'm like, well, they probably just scheduled the time they were going to hit the house with the time they felt he was boarding a plane and they were probably tracking him locally already. So they're like, hey, it's time to detain him, hit the houses, let's go. Do you get what I mean? Does that make sense? Or, or let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, a couple things I just want to address there. Typically, the feds hit in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, because that's when you have the uh, legal authority to hit a house. You, you can obviously, between 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. is typically what most judges will sign off on. Um, but you can ask for a no knock warrant. You can ask for, uh, you know, outside of hours, if you got to do it late at night or, or even earlier in the morning, but typically between 6 AM to 10 PM, most judges are comfortable with signing, uh, signing in that range, mm. uh, depending mm. on the, uh, jurisdiction, et cetera. So that's number one. Number two, uh, th by the way, is audio coming in good for the yeah, chat? Yeah. No, it's, 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 sound, it's sounded good this time. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Cause I know last time they were, they were mad, but yeah. Um, the other thing I want to address so when it comes to people being foreign, right, when, when you come to the airport, Customs owns you, right? And so, so the people understand, right? So you got Customs and Border Protection, right, Office of Field uh, Operations, right, who are, those are the guys that are in the blue uniforms. So when you come in, those are the guys that are in uniform, et cetera, checking you in, checking your passport, doing the searches, everything. If you come into the United States with drugs or anything else like that or there's a further investigation required, that's when they call HSI. So think of... CBP as the police officers and HSI as the detectives, if we're going to say Homeland Security is a police department, right? Yeah, yeah. Just so people, the group, the audience can understand. So when when you have, and I know this because, uh, you know, obviously I was HSI agent for years. If I have, a, if I know I'm about to do a search one on somebody, right? I know exactly where they are. I know when they're in the country, when they're out the country, because they get notified whenever you come in and out because they have customs and immigration authority. You know, mm. uh, when you, uh, HSI has the broadest, um, legal jurisdiction and of any federal law enforcement agency they actually have more authority than the fbi even because you got customs which is title 19 and you got immigration which is title 8 that's a huge amount of statutes that they enforce so when you come into the country customs owns you like even the fbi can't get a crack at you unless hsi allows it so um as soon as you go foreign and you come in they got you now here's the other thing too that a lot of people don't know there's a border search authority right when you come into the united states you have zero fourth amendment rights there's no expectation of privacy when you come in. They can search wait, everything wait, uh, until you leave the phone. airport. Until you leave, like, like how how long does that last? What what, what specifically lasts? Uh, the, well, this, you're pretty much describing like a suspension of the Fourth Amendment rights, which is a a, 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 a right. Yes, to... when you're leaving or entering the United States, there's no you have no Fourth Amendment privilege at the at, at a POE or a uh, port of entry or a functional equivalent. Like you don't you don't have any. Yeah, you don't have any Fourth Amendment rights there because when you're coming and that's due to Title 19 Customs Authority. I mean, hell, bro, on my credentials when I was an agent, it said that I can do warrantless searches at the border. Really? Like, it's literally on their credentials. So, and HSI agents can do it, and so can uh, CBP officers. 
So, right? Not to be confused with Border Patrol agents. Border Patrol agents are in the green uniforms. Okay. So think of it this way. Green uniform means you shouldn't be coming into the United States this way. Blue uniform means it's a valid point of entry. And then obviously HSI enforces for both of those um, interdictory type agencies. Okay. But, l- l- let me piggyback off something you just said. Yeah, So th- th- would this, uh, like an airport, even if you're flying domestically, is still considered as a port of entry, correct? No. So when you're flying domestically, yeah. uh, it, 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 you you haven't touched foreign, it's different. So that that's not going to be monitored by by customs. But if you go foreign, yes, it will be. Well, I guess I'm asking, so say Diddy, because because th- th- I think people are trying to understand how this went down and probably what happened. We haven't seen any trace of Diddy, but I, I got to imagine he's with a team of lawyers. He probably got like maybe like, you know, uh, I'm interrogated, but he probably definitely are with his people. Do you think that they search his entire plane and everybody? Do they have that jurisdiction or they have to, like, ground a plane, go get another warrant for the plane, right, and then search the plane? Because obviously, you know— So it even- depends. It depends. And and please let, let me know if I'm wrong here. So did the plane come from foreign? Uh, The, the plane was not uh coming from— uh, It was in Antigua, right? Wasn't it in, in no, Antigua, no, no. if I'm not— No, no, that's his other plane. That's the plane he owns. This was just a chartered plane. So, so pretty much what happened, he gave the plane he owns to his side bitches to go party. I guess it was someone's birthday. They went, So they were flying all over the Caribbean partying. That's not okay. the plane. That's a black plane that's still in the Caribbean. So okay. while he gave them his plane, he had to go somewhere else. So he booked and chartered a regular plane. And, and I'm looking at the, the past flights for this plane because we checked the tail number. Everything uh-huh. is, uh, yeah, everything is pretty much, well, actually, uh, it, it, it looked like, yeah, it, it it was in like international or in another country, but it was like over a week ago, damn near. So pretty much, yeah, like this is not his plane. He's just taking one trip. All right. So if he didn't go, if he didn't go foreign, yeah. then it's it's you know they, then they don't have there's no there's no customs authority. Okay. Um, but if he goes foreign, that's when they can search everything, bro. They can search your phone. They can search your uh, really your tablets. Everything you come in with under border search authority, they can search everything. Really. Yeah, bro. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I remember I used, when I was agent. Like, if I if I knew someone was coming in, and I knew they would have fo- phones and tablets and all that stuff, I was I was prepared at the airport with like a whole team. <laughs> and he'd come in, and we uh, we detain him. We would take all this all this stuff. We dump it right. And dumping is a slang term for basically is jargon for um, extracting all the data out, right? And if I couldn't extract all the data out, I would I would uh, do a border detention, and uh, then we send him on his way. But yeah, man, you you could search all that stuff because remember, when you have customs authority, right? Mm-hmm. You're you're looking for contraband. Child pornography counts as contraband, and that can be found on a phone, mm. or on a tablet, or on a digital device. Okay. So you could take all that stuff. Matter of fact, it's a very the FBI does this all the time, where um, they have someone that they suspect is involved in like you know some some terrorist activities, whether it's domestic or foreign, and uh, you know they have some an inkling or they have some information. What will happen is that person will come to the United States. HSI will detain him on behalf of the FBI, right? Or customs will detain him. He'll be put in a room. His stuff will be separated in another room, and then they'll go ahead and they'll extract all the shit. Wow. Okay. So, g- 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 being someone who has the experience of you know doing some of these raids or hits, where it's like you know, I think everyone's really shocked by a few things. Like, you know, his lawyers even you know uh, uh, chatting. I don't know if I, I read his lawyer's statement. And I was listening to, you know, some, you know, other experts talk about it. And they're like, this is pretty much how every, you know, defense attorney tries to make it look like it's a crazy way that the feds is going. But but it's kind of like standard. Anyway, I'll, I'll read it and then you can react to it. Um, it says, Diddy team emailed this to Megan Cunniff. And it was like, yesterday there was a gross overuse of military force as search warrants were executed as his residence. Um, there is no excuse for, for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees are treated. Mr. Combs has never was never detained, but was spoken to and cooperated with authorities. Actually, I'll just stop there. That looks like an detainment to me. If your plane is being grounded, you're talking to them, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't like, hey, you want to talk to us. I'm pretty sure it was like, hey, you can't leave right now, which which would constitute a detainment. But his lawyers say he wasn't detained. They say he just spoke to them, right? Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell because again, the plane didn't come from foreign, right? It, it was no. it was it was domestic the whole time. Yes. 
if it was domestic the whole time, then I really don't see a way that they can hold him unless maybe they had some state authority there that has some kind of jurisdiction to hold him for some state crime or something else like that. But from a federal perspective with HSI authority, um, I can't think of anything where they would ha they would be able to hold him for coming in while traveling domestically unless uh, – you know, he had a piece of evidence on him and they need to get it or something like that. Mm. And maybe they, they're they looking to try to get his um, his personal laptop that might have not been at the house and they know that he has it. Uh, or maybe they got a search warrant for his phone. Yeah, they, they got to take his phone, right? You don't think? They could take his phone, yeah. They, they could take his phone, yeah. Hmm. Now, yeah, they absolutely could take his phone. <clears throat> they could get a search warrant for it and take his phone, yeah. Now, the rest of the statement says that this unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment for of Mr. Combs and is nothing but a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There's been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Now, interestingly enough, the guy who was arrested, so there was someone arrested, um... He had cocaine, and let me see what else he had on him, Chad. He had cocaine and something else, which they're calling him a drug mule. Uh, does that could that tie back to Diddy at all, or no? Um, they would have to establish that you know he Diddy was a part of the conspiracy. He was he you know he directed him to do it. He was involved in a drug trafficking organization. Like they would have to they would have to come with some some evidence to be able to tie him to, to that. Mm. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> as far as like domestic, they can't do nothing. Uh, but yeah, you can see right there, you guys see CBP officers there at the airport. Um, because if you scroll up a little bit, um, you can see like it says CBP on the back of uh, I'm also, yeah, I'm also sharing my screen by the way, so so you can watch it in Discord rather than watch it on the um, oh, shit. Yeah, oh, my yeah. bad, I'm looking at it on YouTube, my bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, okay, so I have this on the screen now, um. Which officers are which? Uh, go back. Was on. Scroll through that thing real quick. Uh, keep going. I was about keep to play going. the body cam. That's what I wanted you to see. Oh, sure. Yeah, we could look at that. Okay, so so this is the body cam of the arrest. Which, by the way, how the fuck did they get the body cam? Like that's odd to me. Like, uh, it it was probably. I mean, if it was a local, um, here, let's see, let's see here. Say again. I'm just taking it. Uh, to me, it looks like that's a state authority. If you look at her, I was trying to look at her badge. I don't know if you could blow it up on your end for us, Ak, so yeah, I can yeah, tell yeah. you for more than likely. Because that's a yeah. So let's see here. I can see the badge on the right. Let's see who she works for. Okay, that that looks like a like a like a state type badge. That doesn't look like a Fed badge to me. It's not very clear, but okay. So we keep going. And that's why you have body cam footage because it's, it looks like it's going to be a state case. Uh, okay. So you can see Miami Dade Police Department there, which is our, oh, our for this guy. county police. Okay, for this guy, it's a state case. So I get yeah, it. for this guy. For, I'm talking about this dude, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, wow. Uh, so, so I'm guessing this is Miami Dade uh, Police Car? Yeah, so that's Miami Dade. So it's kind of weird. They're called Miami Dade Police Department, but they're actually really they function more like county police. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's that's our county police. Okay. Yeah. I'm down here, man. Yeah, oh yeah, they're putting on a patrol car. Yeah, they're fighting the folks. So it might have been two little drugs to, to make sense for federal arrest. And then they were traveling domestically. Too, so. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we don't have anything about Diddy. This is kind of interesting. Yeah, it looks like maybe it was someone traveling with him. Yeah. They're calling this guy a drug mule. He supposedly was a basketball player. Like, you know, he used to play college basketball for, uh, they said it was a former basketball player, played at Syracuse from 2018 to 2020. They say he didn't con contribute much, but, you know, I'm wondering if Diddy was like, yo, I need like a white guy to like bring my drugs and guns around. That'd be a smart thing.
I, well, this yeah, would not yeah. do it, but it's like, um, <laughs> you know? There's also a possibility, like, this guy could be, uh, you know. He's a plug. I mean, did he get booked and everything? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I could try to find. Yeah, he has, he has a mugshot. He has a mugshot. Brendan Paul. I'm pretty sure if I look at, um, I don't know. Would they bring him to Broward or no? Uh, no, nah, they're gonna they're gonna probably take him to to. I know there's a big booking station in Kendall. They'll probably book him over there. Cause it's my cause it happened. Opalaka is Miami Dade County. Okay. So he's he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna get processed processed here. Okay, I'm, I'm hitting the search to see Brendan Paul to see if maybe I can find him. Yep. Let's see if we find him, chat. I got to take off in a little bit, but um. Yeah, it's all good. No, 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 no worries. I could jump back on later, but yeah, no. That I um, I just want to give your audience insight as to like when people are traveling. Yeah, yeah. That uh, they're gonna definitely know where they are, bro. Like I guarantee you, when the feds, did, they they probably purposely didn't want him and any of the residences. Yeah, that's what I was so saying. So that right? they, when they did their search warrant, like you you know when you're doing a search warrant on somebody, bro, you know exactly where he's at when you're hitting the house. Yeah, like bro, you know, you know I've used my myself as an example. Like, bro, I was in the house with like. They knew I was traveling to the house. Once I got in the house, they gave me like twenty minutes grace period, my nigga. Like, like, yeah. It, it was clear that they wanted to get in the house and detain me in case they they would want they wanted to grab my phone, right? Oh, because yeah, they're gonna, well, before you do a search warrant, bro, you're gonna have a surveillance team out there. Yeah, you know right? what I mean. It's just exactly. standard practice. Like, it, it, and the other thing too. So, um, it's definitely I confirmed, right? Uh, that HSI New York is the uh, lead office in this situation, um, and I'm. Pretty confident that more than likely the AUSA's office is the Southern District of New York, which uh, I ain't gonna lie, that's not good. Um, the Southern District of New York is They're probably one of the toughest, most aggressive U.S. Attorney's offices in the country. They did six um, nine. They did Casanova. They do the majority of the rap. This is why rap crews in New York could never, uh, could never, you know, have any type of ties to criminal oh, yeah. gangs. The um, Southern District, they're super active. I, shit, I Bro. think I think they give K, they give K Flock to. Uh, um, uh, uh, um, a uh, Fed charge as well. Yeah, um, they they pretty much are the they, they, bro. They took down the mafia. They do all the biggest cases. Like Southern District of New York is by far the most aggressive U.S. Attorney's office in the country. And uh, yeah, it's not looking good, man. I mean, both of them are fantastic. The Eastern District of New York too is very good. Out in Brooklyn, they're very aggressive too because they compete with the Southern District of New York. So regardless. Um, and HSI New York is one of the better offices, so bro, it's it's not a good look, man. It, he, there's a very good chance uh, that he's gonna face charges with this. They wouldn't pursue this if if they uh, if they didn't. It would have been a waste of time. And I think Southern District of New York got R. Kelly too, if I'm not mistaken, bro. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna play yeah. this clip later, but the the former um, prosecutor in the R. Kelly case for the feds, I guess they're retired or some of the sort now. They actually did an interview with the press, and they said. Hey, listen. They're actually go. This this case seems to be going by the R. Kelly playbook, which is that's a scary thing to say. That's the prosecutor or the the former prosecutor that was that was on that case, and we've seen what happened to R. Yeah. Kelly. But they're saying these things that are happening are going pretty much in line with how R. Kelly. By the way, you know R. Kelly spoke about this today too, right? Oh, I didn't. What do you, what do you say? Hey, chat. We have exclusive audio. Whack one hundred. You know, Whack always going to get into some shit. Uh, he has contact with R. Kelly. R. Kelly called from jail. He asked R. Kelly about it, and R. Kelly briefly shared some thoughts. So, you know, it's kind of like a jail call type of thing, but um, we do have that audio for you guys. But it's kind of alarming that, hey, if this is going on the R. Kelly route, this is kind of crazy. Hey, hey, by the way, while you're here, um, yeah. so so CPB, I'm, I'm looking at the, the back of this guy's shirt. What's yeah. that? Uh, so that is uh, that is Customs and Border Protection. That's the guys in a blue blue uniform. Yeah. Um, that are at the airport when checking your passport when you come in or when you leave. Uh, you know, they're 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 officers. Um, this guy's in plain clothes, as you can see from with his shirt. He might be a task force officer more than likely, which is why he's there. Um, and he's wearing plain clothes. But yeah, and yeah, you can see a guy with a raid jacket as well, the white yeah. dude. Uh that that guy looks like an HSI agent from uh from the badge I can see on the left hand side on his chest. So um yeah, bro. I mean, they they know. They they knew when he was coming. They obviously have a manifest so they could see domestic and international flights. Um, they don't have the border search authority though because he's obviously f traveling domestically. Yeah. But um, but yeah, man. It, they, they the Southern District of New York, HSI New York, uh, it's not looking good, bro. There, there's there's I, I like I said before, I predict that there will be charges sometime in the year 2024 at this point because the fact that they were able to do a simultaneous search warrant 
on multiple residences in different districts, by the way. And L.A., they're, they're, it's hard to get a search warrant in L.A. The fact that they're able to get one over there tells me they have more than enough probable cause. So uh, for them to have that much probable cause to get search warrants tells me they probably have almost enough to indict. And if not, they probably got enough to indict off of what they found in the houses. And then, uh, you know, they broke into the safes, et cetera. They probably put that all in there. They probably had uh, prior information that, hey, there's going to be safes in here. Yeah. He keeps yeah. XYZ here, et cetera. Um, they probably detained him here at the airport to get access to his phones. I wouldn't be surprised if that's why they actually detained him at the airport. It was to grab his electronic stuff on his person. Um, and they probably have search warrants ready to go for that. So, yeah, bro. Uh, they're... Um, the, the AUSA's office and the, and the, office, they're licking the AUSA's their chops, office man. and the HI office doing this are some of the best. They're licking their chops. I can tell. Hey, by the way, these three guys who are kind of like blocking the door to the plane, they look serious as fuck, the guys with the shades right here. Uh, man, I'm, I'm, I can imagine how many agencies are tied into this also local police. By the way, chat, I also want to point this out. We're going to do some research. We've got to find everybody. Listen, we're hey, we ain't got no more news than hip-hop, hip-hop boring anyway, except the Drake beef. We're going to find everybody. Look. Remember I said Diddy was going somewhere. Look how slick the diddler is, right? So he gives this actual plane. It's like giving your girl your car, but getting a rental car to go cheat. Look, Young Miami and her friends, the act bad crew, they were taking that plane. I'm telling you, I could go back and find all their stories. They're all in Jamaica, pouring shots, driving a boat, doing all that thought shit. And he probably is like, all right, y'all go get out of my hair. Y'all got my jet. He books another jet. You see these two people right here? Two girls look like two baddies, right? Diddy was probably going to another fucking freak off. This nigga Diddy don't stop, bro. <laughs> take that fucking take that. Look, there's two girls right here. There's two girls right here. Chat, y'all see them? Two girls, one right here, one right here. Shit, the diddler was was already on the way to another freak off. My boy, do not stop. Holy shit. Hey, man. You got to you got to do what you got to do, man. But yo, <laughs> uh, I'm going to take off, bro. Yeah, yeah. But uh just want to give your uh, audience a little bit of insight when it comes to like traveling internationally, planes, how that works and everything else like that, but uh, yeah, bro. And, they they, they probably do. I'm I'm gonna assume, just given my opinion, professional opinion on this, and and etc. There's no point to stop a domestic flight like that unless you had a purpose. And the only purpose in my head that I could think is they want to get access to his personal devices on his person because that's probably gonna have some um, important information on it. So that's what I that's what I think. They probably got search warrants written up. Because keep in mind. Once they they found the information in the house, excuse me, once they started seizing evidence in the house, that gives them even more probable cause to want to search other stuff. So while they're there at the house, because I've done this before, while they're there at the house, there's another agent writing an affidavit on other stuff that they need to search mm. right then and there. So I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't get a search warrant signed that day saying, yo, we need his phone too, and we need his tablets, et cetera. Hey, okay. So that that, that's what I'm thinking is why they stopped him on a domestic flight like this. Hey, by the way, uh, chat, you know, Myron, in a lot of these cases that have uh, a lot of criminal elements, um, so to speak, um, he's almost like a partner in crime. He gives me a lot of information that, you know, obviously we would love to know. And we do deep dives. Uh, what I was trying to say. Yeah, I see some haters in the chat saying Myron was a desk agent. Fuck off. I did OCDF cases. I did some of the biggest cases for HSI. At one time, I had one of the biggest cases in the agency, man. So... These people that are saying I was desk agent, et cetera, fuck out of here. I did real cases. I've ran hundreds of reports, hundreds of affidavits. I've arrested hundreds of people. I had the number one arrest for 2016 fiscal year in Laredo, Texas, one of the busiest offices. I got a director's award. Like, all this shit's behind me in my wall. Like, people talking all this shit. It's like, no, I was really out here doing it. So, for the haters, fuck you. Hey, and and so so I really say that to say I kind of want to, you know, you know, I, I want you to be a part of all my streams as much as you can. I know you have a lot of shit to do, so you know we could collaborate. No, absolutely, I, I bro. You, I, you know, because there's no one else really that's like breaking this shit down like this, and there's no YouTubers that actually used to do these kinds of cases. And I know how DEA works, ATF works, FBI works. Every agency has their little perks, etc., shit like that. But uh, and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and, and, you know, but yeah, I'd be happy to give my uh, my take on it and let okay. you know what was going before on. you go before you go because we're about to play yeah. a video and i'm not too sure what this video came from but it looks like a video of the aftermath of after the feds ransacked the house i want you to explain because you've written search warrants you've executed them you've done a lot of this yeah what is the mode because sometimes i lose my keys and i feel like man i can't find it look like if there's a search warrant they're gonna find what they're coming for what is the strategic way and the method of okay we're going into a place we're going for, let's say, electronics, blah, blah, blah. But also, you don't know if there's hidden compartments, hidden doors. You know, they talked about there was a underground, like, grotto, which some people are calling the tunnel. There's a lot of things to search at at, a, at at such a large estate. There's two of them. 
what would be the method or the mode of um, doing the search? And then secondly, we, we all got to know that they're safes. So are you going to do you have an informant that's going to give you the safe codes or you're going to say we're breaking every safe? Fuck it. Yeah. So um, you would need like, um, again, it depends on the warrant. Right. So like uh, remember how I was explaining last time, like if you got a drug warrant, right, like you can justify searching in nooks and crannies because drugs can be hidden anywhere. Right. So. In their warrant, depending on what they're looking for, let's say they're looking for a thumb drive that might have some questionable information on it. Well, that pretty much gives them authority to look all through the house and be as invasive as they need to because a thumb drive can be extremely small, right? Then if they if they know that there are safes in there, they could say, yeah, we, we have reason to believe or probable cause to believe that there's going to be safes on the location. We want to just break the safes, right? And that's when you kind of tell the, the person that, that's there, hey, look, bro, um, it's up to you what you want to do. You can either give me the code or I'm going to break this safe. And then it's up to the person, you know, that that has the property being searched to decide what they're going to do. Um, but I've done it before where, like, they'll be like, no, I'm not giving it. And I'm like, okay, cool. I just take the safe and I and I break into it, uh, you know, because the search warrant, basically the, the feds own the house while they're in the house, while, while they got that search warrant. Okay. Um, so, yeah. so, so do you think they gave him the option of, hey, listen – we're, we have a search warrant to get up in there anyway, but give us the code to the safe. We won't break it, right? Because they probably have a bunch of safes. Do you think they give them that option, or by the time they're in yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you, it, the nice thing to do is always give that option, right? So, like, if I have a search warrant for someone's phone, I tell them, look, man, I got a search warrant for your phone. You have two options. You can give me the code, and I'll get in there, and I'll get you your phone back today. Or if you don't want to give me the code, I'm going to have to take your phone, and I'm going to get into it anyway with, with uh, you know, with my, because obviously you have like data, you have technology that can help you break it, break the, the jail, jailbreak the phone and get in there. So, uh, but yeah, so, but I, me personally, I always used to be nice to them and like tell them, Hey man, you got, these are two options. I'd rather give your phone back or I'd rather not break your property. Um, but you know, it's always up to them. Sometimes they, they put, try to play hardball, like, no, fuck you. And I'm like, okay, cool. And you just take it hey, and then you, I, I, you break into it. I could tell you in my situation, you know what they did? So I'm what? I'm down. So they bring me down and they're talking to me, and um, they basically say, "Hey, listen, you have a bunch of safes. We we have to look through them." And and I tell them like it's it's all weapons in there. Like there's just guns, and they're like it doesn't matter. They're like, "Hey, listen, what's the codes? Write it down. Whatever the case is." Uh -huh. um, uh, um, I was trying to finesse away. I was like, "Oh, they're they're fingerprinted." They're like, "All right, cool. We're gonna bring you back there. Um, it's don't don't play with us. Open everything, and it's good." Otherwise, we're gonna break the shit. We don't give a fuck. Like they, they, they were yeah. pretty clear on, hey, listen, we're playing ball with not having to break your expensive safes, but we got no problem doing it. Yeah, yeah, and, it's and, gonna and take that's longer too. To yeah, like you know, I always, you know, I kind of had this mantra, like, you know, you're, you're, you're there, you're there to take people's freedom away, but you're not there to take their dignity away, right? So, like, I never really was one of these guys that like would talk shit to the a suspect or or fuck you, or in this other stuff. Like, I always noticed, like, being nicer to them, and it, it was o always worked better to get them to cooperate, to get them to, you know, get you what you need, et cetera. So, yeah, man. Like, you don't need to shit on them and take their dignity away, too. Like, that's that's never a good look. And whenever guys would do that shit, I'd be like, bro, chill. You know, so. When do we see, um, when do we see maybe a copy of the, well, two things. Obviously, Diddy and his lawyers would have it, but a copy of the, the affidavit of the search warrant and and possibly a so report of out. what they took. I, I went on. I went on Southern District of New York, uh -huh. right, the Pacer, to try to find it. But that that shit is sealed, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to keep it sealed until the 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 case is over. You got to be like a Trump to be able to get a search warrant unsealed like he was able to do. Oh, you could find search warrants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Trump when Trump uh, got his house searched, that that search warrant like. They, his lawyers pushed to get that shit unsealed, and they, they were able to get it unsealed. But it took, like, a lot to get it uh, unsealed. So um, Diddy's warrant guarantee it's, it's sealed. And, and the reason why, they're going to say, we have to seal it because we have informants in play. People's livelihood, uh, people's lives are in danger, et cetera. Diddy's a dangerous person. They're going to say, you know, all this shit to make sure that it stays sealed. I mean, Trump was able to get his shit unsealed, but, bro, that's former president of the United States. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at... Uh, these images here. So, uh, is there any any place that's kind of like usually off limits when you're che like if you're checking for electronic um, electronic, you know, um, electronic devices? Are you fucking going through the medicine cabinet? Are you going through 
you know what I mean? You're checking under the toilet. But, like, like how how crazy is this surge? Let's just imagine they're looking for, because this is what's now being rumored. The reason why they hit these cribs is because what's what's constantly alleged in about three or so um in three or so civil lawsuits is that Diddy has these cameras that have been recording all that's been going on, okay? And they believe if if any if they have any video that corroborates any uh, activity that either the civil suits or maybe they're, they're getting as a complaint, that that's going to help the case tremendously. But also y you have to you have to believe that you know, it, um, also, here's the thing, too. It was also said in the Little Rod's lawsuit, or was it Little Rod or was it Cassie? Diddy has, like, a technician guy, and that's the only guy that really knows the ins and outs. So there was a room that looked like, like, it looked like it was a college campus because it looks like it was actually a, um, what do you call it again? A room where, like, it's like a switch, like a bunch of switches, and yeah, right here. Like, you're seeing a lot of networking stuff. You know, I, 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 I was in IT for a bit, so... I know that a house that's this big, especially if you want Wi-Fi everywhere, you want you want rooms everywhere to get all this type of, you know, and you want to be able to monitor it, and you have probably a million. Everything's on Wi-Fi. Probably the thermostat, probably the fucking the cameras, the heat in, the garage. You have to wire this place up, and you probably have some switches, which also probably then route to, like, maybe some type of cloud storage for, for, for all this information. So it looked like they ransacked this too. Uh, you know, they probably had some tech guys do this. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Myron, what would be probably the places? Name the, the top three places you want to hit in a house like this, given the fact that they're trying to get electronic um, data that could help prove this. Yeah, I mean, you would obviously try to see if you can get the um, – if the CCTVs have like uh, like a cloud or whatever, you would obviously want to get that. Um, you'd want to go in the bedroom and get all tablets, all phones. Um, you want to <clears throat> check, uh, get any type of uh, cameras that might be, uh, you know, covert. You definitely want those. Um, and then, and then the biggest thing is the informants are going to tell you where a lot of the good shit is, right? Because the fact that they are in the house in the first place tells me that they got informants. So the informants are the ones that told them, "Hey, there's this info here, etc." So they're able to go ahead and collect from there. But typically, depending on uh, what type of warrant you're trying to do that will dictate where you're trying to search right so if you're trying to do a drug if you're doing a drug warrant obviously you're going to search certain places nooks and crannies where the drugs are going to be held typically your informants are going to tell you where it's at so it depends but with something like this where it's sex trafficking um and they're looking at digital evidence mostly you want to take all tablets all computers all thumb drives all phones everything and i think that's a big reason why they probably stopped at them at the airport was to take his personal phone that's on his person Mm. So that's that's what you would want when it, uh, when you're there. I mean, you got a forensic agent right there on scene with you. You're extracting everything there on scene while you can um, before he can, like, you know, wipe anything. Uh, that's probably another reason, too, why they made sure he wasn't in the house so that he wouldn't be able to remotely wipe anything. So, uh, yeah, man, that's that's what I would uh, do, depending on. I wish I could read the affidavit because that will tell you give you even more insight. But but yeah, I, but yo, I, I'm I'm uh, I got to take off right now, brother. Definitely but um. But obviously, you know, as you do coverage on this, I'll jump in and make sure that I can, you know, add any add any insight I can to, you know, help help your audience understand the stuff more. Nah, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you tremendously. Uh, people, go check out my man Myron. Uh, Feds reacted, of course. Uh, the biggest male self improvement podcast in the world with Fresh and Fit. Uh, they, yeah. they do shows Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please go check them out. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. And I got awards behind me here. I'm not on camera right now, but if I was, I would show y'all. But. uh but yeah, man, let the haters hate. It is what it is. But now, nah, man, I'll 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 uh, jump back on with you another time when you need me. All right, definitely, brother. All right, brother. Peace. All right, peace. Okay, we got Wack One Hundred. Wack One Hundred just hit me. He said, "Ack, he got the play. He knows the play." By the way, we also have the interview um, from R. Kelly. We got to play. Shit, we got a lot to do.